A Doha on Mahamudra by the Mahasita Virupa. Wondrous, the Mahamudra, the equality of samsara and nirvana, is quintessentially completely pure like space. It does not have a nature that can be indicated, so it does not have a path of words and terms. It has an inexpressible nature, its essence free from all dependent phenomenon. It cannot be examined or analyzed. It cannot be indicated by examples. It does not even exist as inexemplifiable. It transcends being an object of the intellect. It is not permanent, not measurable. It is neither samsara nor nirvana. It is not appearance. <clears throat> it is not emptiness. It is neither a thing or nothing. It is not birthless. It is not the natural true nature. It is not a transcendence of intellect. It's not isn't and it's not is because it cannot be described by the intellect. It has no connection with any dualistic phenomenon. It is primordial equality. Although its essence, etymology, and function is taught, that's the same as teaching the unreal sharpness or bluntness of the unreal horns of a rabbit. All phenomena are no different from these characteristics. The phenomenal relative relativities that exist and appear in this way have no essence. They are just the application of names and symbols. There is not slightest distinctive difference between these names and their meanings. It is primordial innateness. There is nothing to seek elsewhere. The mind's nature an empty name, free from conceptualization, is Mahamudra. It is the same as the nature of space, a primordial non-existent emptiness. It is quintessentially unborn. It is not a conceptual entity. <clears throat> like space, it is all-pervading and has no change or passing away. It is empty in all times and circumstances. It is primordial selfless. It has no memory, thoughts, or concepts. <clears throat> like the water of a mirage, it neither binds or frees. It neither departs from the natural state. All beings are the emanations of Mahamudra. The essence of emanation is primordial birthlessness, the Dharma Datu. All the features of dualistic appearances also, such as happiness and suffering, are the natural true nature, the display of Mahamudra. And within that display also there is no truth, no permanence, and therefore it never departs from the seal of the natural state of emptiness. Some give Abhishekas, causing torment. Some cry whom and pot and count their mala beads. Some consume feces, urine, blood, semen, and flesh. Some are deluded by meditation on the yoga, the nadis, and the winds. Wondrous, in the care of a pure guru, realize the single knowledge in this way. As everything is delusion, there is no true realization. And there is no realized or realizer. This is freedom from all extremes and bias. And there is no freedom or non-freedom. It is a state of natural equality. If one has that certain realization, there will be stainlessness in all else. 
As everything appears as the Dharmakaya, no thoughts of adoption or rejection arise, and there is neither meditation nor meditation. Concepts cannot stain. There is never any dependence on perceived appearances or non-appearances. As there are no ideas of actor or action, there is freedom from all orientation. And there are no thoughts of hope and fear. All attainment is given up. If one realizes the natural true state that has been taught by Guru, all memories and thoughts are destroyed in the Dharma Datu. Consciousness does not dwell on its objects and there is freedom from all attachment. Therefore, all phenomena are liberated within the uncontrived natural state. Unattached to anything, free from pride and all other stains, reverent and perfectly guided by the pure guru, free from all mental activity, there are no stains and no doubts. Purified of knower and known, the Dharmata manifests. If one doesn't realize the na natural Mahamudra, there will always be attachment to everything because of the power of duality. There will be a continuous darkness of all kinds of thoughts. There will be no dwelling in the unmistaken meaning. Instead, there will be wandering and circling in samsara. There will be attachment and craving for all fame and gain. On the contrived path, there will arise signs of great learning, contemplation and realization, good experiences, sihis, blessing and power. But as these are the stains of outer objects, the wise do not direct their minds towards them. If one fabricates the truth in the mind, one will fall into two extremes and circle in samsara because that is the root of becoming. Look at the root of everything, the essence of the mind, whatever it is. <clears throat> if one looks, sees nothing and is freed from mental activity, one will definitely be liberated. In the expanse of the true nature of the mind, there is no, it is this. Therefore, within, there isn't the duality of meditation and an object of meditation. <clears throat> Rest undistractedly in a state wherein no thought of any existence or non-existence. If one mentally fabricates anything such as emptiness, birthlessness, transcendence of the intellect, and freedom from extremes, one will not dwell in the meaning of the true nature, but be very far from it. Rest in a relaxed state, without considering emptiness or non-emptiness, without resting or not resting, freely realizing as it is, but just like a zombie, without thoughts of releasing or holding. If one knows the true nature of the truth and rests in that state. Habituation to concepts of duality will be swiftly destroyed. If one is distracted by concepts and does not dwell in the state of realization, habituation to concepts of duality will not be stopped. Although someone with loss of sight knows he has an illness of the eyes, if there is no eye illness, the appearance of darkness is not to be countered. If one mentally fabricates the true nature, has attachment to experiences, and focuses on the meaning of the truth, one's meditation will be mistaken. Attachment to favorable circumstances becomes the cause of bondage. All adverse, evil circumstances are sacred seedhees because adverse circumstances 
clarify the yogin's experiences. Do not reject bad circumstances. Knowing the true nature cultivates it within them. The conduct that cultivates in that way and reaches the conclusion of experience and realization is like a whip that encounters the fast steed. If someone with realization and good experiences does not have the aid of conduct, he will be like a man with no eyes and no legs. Practice the meaning of the ultimate true state without attachment. The supreme, sublime conduct of doing whatever one likes in one's own way, without rejection, without accomplishment, without attachment, without conduct, without stopping. If with attachment and craving one accomplishes or stops everything, this will not accord with the tantras and will be the error of transgressive conduct. Even if a person has the great confidence of relatively being a Buddha, they should not forsake a great accumulation of merit, but apply themselves to it as much as possible. Even if samsaric beings have minds that are without worry and free from fear, they should avoid even the slightest action that is bad karma. Even if all phenomena are empty and free of extremes, like space, completely abandon all attachment and aversion, all grasping and clinging. Even if you have realized the meaning of the true nature, the great immateriality free from extremes, until you have attained stability in them, Keep your experiences and realizations secret from others. Even if you have a great confidence and don't need to rely on anyone else as a guide, place your kind guru upon the crown of your head. As there are no seer or seen, differences are spontaneously liberated. As the practitioner is eliminated, there is freedom from all accomplishment of effort, and the goal is eliminated. There is liberation from all hope and fear. As the self has been uprooted, there is victory in the battle with the Maras. As attachment to reality has been spontaneously destroyed, there is liberation from all samsara and nirvana. When knowledge is purified in the basis, it is called perfect Buddhahood. When the level of the cessation of intellect and phenomenon is reached, that is called nirvana. Uncontrived, unchanging, total liberation from all attainment and elimination. Wondrous, whatever it is that is named by the great profound word Mahamudra, it is also merely named empty, as there is natural emptiness with each instant, who realized selflessness. As there is no realizer, Buddha is merely a designation, just a name, that has no true reality. It is an appearance to disciples. To the disciples also it is merely a selfless illusory emanation. Mahamudra is a name given by the intellect of infants. Delusion and non-delusion are also just names. What being knows experiences delusion? Not an atom of the result, nirvana, exists or can be seen. Liberation and non-liberation are just incidental names. Non-existence and the path of liberation are bound in peaceful and pure space. Relative and ultimate are also merely persistent naming. In the Dharmadhatu there are no two truths. 
There is no Dharma Datu. This completes the Doha treasure of Varupa. Thank you very much for listening. Sarva Mangalam.